Hello everybody. Since my Shapeoko is torn apart in an attempt to dial in the accuracy a little bit better, I thought I'd take the time to start looking at some different CAD slash CAM packages. So far all of my G-code has been generated using a combination of Inkscape and MakerCam.com. However, while I like this workflow just fine, I can't help but wonder what other software is out there and if it could help me be more efficient at doing my work. I decided that it might be helpful for other CNC beginners for me to document this process. So I'm going to be doing some review videos on some different applications. With any luck, I'm hoping to learn something. And maybe you will too. I think the next thing to do is to lay out some guidelines of what I need the software to do. First of all, I think it needs to be at least as versatile as my current workflow of Inkscape and MakerCam. Second, while it doesn't have to be a single software solution, that would be a bonus in my mind. That is, as long as it works well. Third, any software package or combination of software that I choose to use needs to be affordable. And for me, that means it needs to be under $150. Now that that's out of the way, let's make something in Inkscape and Cam it in MakerCam. That way we're all on the same page. And if anybody's interested in this workflow, you can see it in action. Okay, so I've launched a new instance of Inkscape right now. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Properties. And then I'm going to change the default unit to millimeters. You, you might want to do it to inches or something, but you definitely want to change it before you use it every time. Fortunately, you can't change it to be a default on whatever you use, or I haven't figured out how to. Um, I'm going to change this to millimeters as well. And you can change this to a different size custom if you want, but we're going to leave it like that. So what I think we're going to do is just make a simple iPhone stand like the one I made in my previous video. So what we need to do first is we can zoom in by hitting control and then using the scroll wheel to zoom in a little bit. And we're going to select this rectangle and square tool. I'm going to change the radius of the corners to be 3.175. 3.175. And that will basically just make it so the end mill won't it won't be any sharper than the end mill can actually cut and then we're just going to kind of just click and drag we're going to then be able to change the width right up here to I want it to be 90 90 millimeters so there's that and then the height will be 50 okay and then we can basically click on using this tool we can click on the X and Y and zero it out so that it's when we transfer it over to maker cam then it will it'll be on the origin point of zero zero on the X Y which will be kind of important I noticed I don't this is one thing I don't like about the software you tell the box to be a certain um, dimension and then it will add a little bit and I don't know if that's because of the the width of the stroke or what but it's kind of annoying because it, it alters everything over and over again uh, which is a pain in the rear I've also noticed noted that noticed that when you go back to this tool and you can click on this you can actually notice that the radius sometimes changes too especially if you um, in this mode if you ch you know alter it slightly and then go back to this you'll notice that it changed kind of which is not cool as far as I'm concerned I'm just going to go back so there's little things like that that really annoy me and uh, mystify me about the software and I'm sure it's just because I haven't used it enough or I'm missing some you know tidbit of knowledge uh, about it but it just is something that is very uh, unintuitive that I'm I just don't like but for the most part I still like it alright next thing we're gonna do is make the inside um, 
box that the, the iPhone will stand in. We're going to make this box 65 millimeters by 18 millimeters. Maybe let's fix this again. Five. All right. Now we have the we have both of the things that we need to actually make the stand. We have the geometry all ready to go, but it's not in the right place. So we're going to go to Object, Align, and then we're going to center these two. If you select both of them like that, where I basically just did a or used the tool to make a box around both of them and selected both of them at the same time, I can I can align them so they're aligned on the one axis. And actually, that seems pretty good. Let's click on this and see where it is on the Y. Hmm. Let's make this just 24 there. OK, so everything should be, for the most part, ready to go. And that's how easy it is to make something real simple that's, you know, 2D, you know, uh, CAD, you know, set up in this software. So basically, we have the outside, which will be the, um, when we get into MakerCam, will be the um, profile cut. And then the inside one will be a pocket that will actually allow us to put the iPhone in it. So that's that. Now we need to save it. So save. I think I'm going to go desktop. And, or did it? No, I didn't. Inkscape demo, okay. And let's call it Inkscape demo. That'll work. Hit save. All right, now we have an SVG file. So we're going to minimize. Oh, well, nah, just leave it up. Go to Chrome. All right, so we're in Maker Cam. First thing we have to do is change it to centimeters. Change this to 90. Uh, this is important if you're using Inkscape. If you're using Illustrator, then it's all set up. That just changes the pixels uh, per inch. So it's important to note that Inkscape's a little bit different than some other software. If you don't change that and you use Inkscape, you're going to end up with a little bit smaller or a little bit larger um, than what you expected. So now we're going to open the SVG file, which go to projects, Inkscape demo, open it up. And as you can see, there we go. So now using the selector tool, I'm going to Select, deselect all of that, and then select just this inside, this this inside one that we're going to make a pocket. Make a pocket. Uh, let's call this pocket um, pocket iPhone. That should be pretty easy to remember. Um, let's see, tool diameter is going to be three point seven five. Let's see, target depth is going to be, I think I made mine 14 millimeters, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, safety height can be 3.15. Uh, surface is going to be the z zero, 40% will be fine. Uh, I believe that's what I used before. I changed this, I think, to be 12, and this to be... I'm thinking 700. Obviously, I'm not going to use this to cut with, but those are kind of the measurements that I used when I made this to actually cut it before. So, trying to recreate this. All right, so now that we have these dashed lines, we can tell that this is a pocket. Now we can click on this outside one once that's deselected. Or do that. <laughs> See, that's what I mean. MakerCam sometimes does quirky little things because it's a web applet. So 
kind of is annoying sometimes. I still like it though because it is free and it does do a pretty good job so far. So profile cut. Let's call it profile outside. 0.175. This has got to be 19. Uh, let's see, it's the material is technically 19.05, so we'll call it 19.5. That should be that should be able to cut it out pretty pretty effectively. Safety height. All right, so click OK there, and we get a light blue color in the whole area that is actually going to be cut out there by that. OK, and now I don't believe I tried tabs on this. I don't. I just kind of gave up with them before, but you can also um, add tabs. But let's do cal calculate all. And if you notice, another part about it being a web applet is sometimes it sticks on this, but if you just click on the screen, it like clears off. It just, I think the jQuery um, slash Ajax setup is that's probably powering this um, this applet is kind of you know it, sometimes it gets a little janky, um, but it does work fine. Seems to be okay. So both are both of those are now. If we wanted to add tabs, it's pretty simple. You just select the area that, or the you know the line that you want the tabs on. You can add selected tabs. Now I'm going to make my tabs a millimeter uh, by a millimeter, and spacing 15. Why not? So I'm just get one tab, I guess. <laughs> but basically, yeah, you can just grab that tab and move it around to wherever you want. That basically will give it some, probably two tabs would have been really nice on this. Um, and then, let's see, that's basically it. And now all we have to do is export the G code. Okay, the profile's last, so that's what definitely what we want to have happen. We don't want it in an instance where the profile's first, otherwise we'll be in big trouble. Um, we want to make sure that both of them are selected, so we have to use the shift key so that they're both blue. And then we can export toolpaths and then we can just call them parts yeah sure why not save okay so that's saved and also we can go up here and save SVG file so if we ever want to come back into MakerCam with that file and alter uh, the toolpaths or anything like that we can because the G code file is different than the this file obviously. So I'm just going to name it Inkscape Demo um, Cam. Hit save and then that's that's the whole process. And if you want to see that actually being cut out I have a video that's linked either in the description or if I can I'll link it in, in a annotation right here. And thanks for watching. Hopefully you find this entertaining or educational or something. If you do, uh, think about liking the video or subscribing to my channel. Um, and bye.